In the screencast, we're going to cover basic, dominant, recessive alleles, complete dominance, and start to learn some tools to make predictions about offspring when we know a little bit about the parents. Remember that genetics is just the study of heredity and inheritance. And a question that always comes up, or a reminder that needs to be made, is that we're only dealing with inherited characteristics. Those are the ones that can be passed on from parents to offspring. Those are heritable traits. We want to have a good handle on some of the terms that we, that we use quite often. The chromosome theory of heredity really states that it's the genes that are responsible for inheritance or that the characteristics or the traits that we have are determined by those genes that are a part of the chromosome. So remember that chromosomes are made up of long chains of DNA, nice wound up organized DNA, and specific genes along that DNA molecule are what are eventually going to encode for specific sequences of amino acids and then determine our characteristics. Um, alleles are just specific examples or versions of different genes. So we want to be able to use these words and this terminology when talking about genes, talking about genetics, and talking about inheritance. So genetics gives us the means to make good predictions about offspring if we know a little bit about the parents. Now, this is getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but for example, by looking at mama rat and daddy rat here, there are a number of potential outcomes or, or traits that their offspring can have. And a little bit's beyond our scope at the beginning here, but just know that there's a lot of inheritance patterns, and genetics really can be complicated because it is always involving a combination of genes from mom and dad. It's the interaction of these genes and how they interact that will really determine the finished product or the outcome of the offspring. Once again, we're making it back to this terminology, the difference between a gene and an allele. I've often used the analogy of just looking at your own shoes. Assuming that you basically are wearing the same shoe on each right and left foot, they are the same shoe but they're different. They've got different characteristics. Most notably is probably one is made for the left foot and one is made for the right foot. So for all intents and purposes, they are mirrors of one another. But if you look closely, they probably have individual distinguishing characteristics as well. Well, an allele is just a specific version of a gene. And as we start to talk about pea plants as a real simple means to, to study genetics, um, for example, there are alleles for shortness or tallness. They're just different forms of the same height gene. And speaking of genetics, one of the first things we encounter is the idea of dominant versus recessive genes. So very simply put, to start off with, a dominant trait is one that is caused by a gene that masks or hides other recessive forms. And again, since you always have one gene from mom and one gene from dad, they have to interact. And sometimes they have a dominant form of the gene. Uh, there's a little more complexity about what really makes a gene dominant versus recessive. But for now, we'll just, we'll just define it as the one that overpowers or hides or covers up a recessive form. The recessive form of the gene, however, is the one that gets masked. The allele, the recessive form of the gene, that allele gets covered up by the other one. So for example, here's just an example of a recessive allele. It's a trait for humans that we call attached earlobes. Instead of having a free earlobe that kind of dangles from the side of the of the side of the face, a an attached earlobe attaches straight across to the skin of the face. So recessive traits, one thing to bring up now is that they are only going to be shown when two recessives are inherited. So in other words, a recessive from mom and a recessive from dad are inherited. Because if you do inherit a dominant form of the gene, 
then the dominant form definitely will be expressed. So we said we were going to use pea plants as a model or an introduction for simple genes and simple genetic inheritance. So this guy right here named Gregor Mendel, he's referred to as the father of genetics by a lot of sources, often referred to as the father of genetics. He just happened to be an individual that uh, also was a gardener, and he just started, basically started noticing these real predictable and steady patterns when he would cross uh, cross-pollinate pea plants with slightly different characteristics. So we'll come back to the pea plants in a minute, but first some reminders of how we're going to use the information to determine offspring if we know a little bit about the parents. Well there's a couple things that we need to do and we'll explain this a little bit more in more detail in a few slides. But first you have to determine what characteristics are actually dominant and which ones are recessive. And secondly, we'll then come up with a letter to actually represent the allele uh, for its dominance or recessive. So we just said we were going to use letters to represent genes. Well, there's two more terms that we need to know and need to be able to use. And if you can use these words, you're going to really, you're really going to be able to grasp uh, genetics and be able to solve genetic problems in the future. The first one is Genotype. Um, in order to dis describe what a genotype is, I often take the three syllables and I put them in reverse order. Instead of genotype, I say type O gene, and that's really what a genotype represents. It is the combination of the actual alleles or the, or the gene itself. We aren't talking about the characteristic. For example, we aren't talking about the color of eyes. We're talking about the genes that determine eye color. And again, we use letters. We'll show you more about how we use letters and how we determine what the letters are. But for example, the capital B, capital B, or capital B, lowercase b, those are representing the genes for brown eyes. You don't have a couple of Bs on your face. You actually have eyes that are of a certain color. But the genotype represents those genes. The the other term that is associated with genotype is phenotype. Now this is exactly the trait we're talking about. This is the expression of the genes. The phenotype is the expression. So the phenotype is the, is the eye color or the pattern in the shells of these clams or the actual petal color of, the, of these flowers. I think of phenotype, I try to keep that characteristic straight or the definition straight that whenever we're talking phenotype, we're talking about the physical characteristics. So I'm thinking about pH there. Now that isn't necessarily a rule. It's not always physical characteristics. For example, my phenotype for my blood type might be type O negative, and you can't actually see that with your own eyes, but it is the expressed trait. Now to study genetics, we're going to start with talking about the pea plants. So here are some of the characteristics that Gregor Mendel actually started to observe and he started to work with. Just of note, you would never need to memorize any of these things. You don't need to know these different characteristics. You don't need to know the dominant form over the recessive form because you'll always have this little chart or these pictures to just to help you out. But let's just notice how we use letters to represent these things. First of all, on the left-hand side here, we have the dominant traits. These are dominant traits that are seen in pea plants. For example, the first one, round seed over wrinkled seed. And you can find that in the, in the chart down the right with the, with the pictures. But the round seed is a dominant gene which is going to cover up a gene for wrinkled. Again, remember you will always inherit two forms of a gene. So if an individual inherited two genes for round seed or at least just one gene for round seed, remember one from each parent, that would result in having a round seed. The only way to get wrinkled seed would actually to be inheriting two lowercase or two recessive forms of the gene. So starting to put this together, 
Pea plants, they're flowering plants, they reproduce sexually, which means there has to be a combination of genetic material. One flower has to be pollinated by another, and pea plants will always get two copies of each gene, one from each, one from each parent plant. It sounds goofy to say the mama pea plant and a, and a father pea plant, but sometimes I'll talk about that because it is sexual reproduction. So there's two ways to combine these things. You can combine them with a word that is called homozygous or homozygous. And what that means is that this prefix means same. It means that they inherit the same type of gene from each parent. So they might inherit a dominant form of the gene for each parent or a recessive form of the gene for each parent. Either way, that's referred to as homozygous. Another name for it is a purebred, just because they, re they have received the same type. There's no mixing of two different forms of the gene. The alternative to that is what is called heterozygous. Hetero means different or other. And when you receive two different versions of a gene, one form or the form that you inherit from dad is different than the form that you inherit from mom, then that is referred to as heterozygous. Along with the two terms that we already talked about, these four are super important to keep straight and be able to use. The words genotype, phenotype, and the words homozygous and heterozygous. It's vital to keep those two pairs of words straight and be able to use them. So quickly, we'll just run through a few little practice questions or problems using genotype and, and phenotype and homozygous and heterozygous. Again, using the chart at the top of the pea plant characteristics, um, I'm going to move rather quickly, but you can pause this and, and try them on your own. You'll get plenty of opportunity. Just note that when we're talking about genotype, we must be looking for the actual genes. So in other words, in genetic problems, genotype means write the letters. And so we know it's homozygous, so we know that there's going to be a combination of the same gene from both parents. So wrinkled, wrinkled seeds we know is a cat is a lowercase r and since it's homozygous for wrinkled the genotype for a homozygous wrinkled seed pea plant would be lowercase r lowercase r genotype for a heterozygous axial now heterozygous means there has to be a dominant and a recessive so so heterozygous axial flower axial is a dominant so we know that it's going to be capital A for axial, and it will be lowercase a, which is a gene for terminal, but it's recessive. There's heterozygous. The genotype for a pure, for a pure green pod seed plant. Pure green is the same as homozygous, so the green pod is a capital G, capital G. Genotype for a hybrid. Hybrid is another name for heterozygous. Heterozygous tall. One capital from one parent and one lowercase from the other parent. So in other words, that it inherited a tall gene or tall allele from one parent and a short allele from the other parent. This last one, we're looking for the phenotype. So remember, we're looking for the actual expression. So the genotype for seed color is capital Y, lowercase y. Therefore, the actual phenotype would be yellow seeds. So here's a typical problem. Complete dominance problem. Cross or mate a homozygous dominant gray seed with a homozygous recessive white seed. So one parent, homozygous gray, one parent would be homozygous dominant. One would be homozygous recessive, the white form of that. There's the genotypes. So here we're introducing for the first time what's called a Punnett square. The Punnett square is what you see here. It's a little four square tool that will help us to determine which offspring are possible. So alleles, remember, will segregate when sperm or egg cells are made in meiosis. So here is one parent this is the other. So watch what I'm going to do with these genes. This parent, I'm going to put those genes over two of the columns, 
and it really doesn't matter for our purposes which is which. The other parent I'm going to put along the side. Now to fill these in, I simply bring this letter down and these ones across. Capital G, little g. This capital G, this lowercase g. G, G. Now, in this possible outcome, when one parent is homozygous dominant and the other is homozygous recessive, the genotypes will all be this. If those were the possible allele combinations from the parents, the only possible offspring combination, because they will get one from each parent, would be capital G, lowercase g. In that case, they will all show 100% the dominant phenotype. Using the same characteristics, we can do another example. So a heterozygous dominant, and I hope you realize that heterozygous dominant is, is redundant. So far with complete dominance, there is no such thing as heterozygous recessive. Because if it was heterozygous, it would have to show the dominant form. So we've got heterozygous gray with a homozygous white. And we'll put that into a Punnett square. Again, putting one parent across the top and one parent across the side, we can now combine these again. Remember what this really represents, and I'll do this for effect. This represents the possible genes in those sex cells and the possible genes in these sex cells or gametes. So this possible combination, if we fill out this Punnett square, will give us this possible outcome. So for the genotype, 50% would be this, and 50% would be this. Now, remember that this is only used for making predictions. There are no guarantees. So this is only for making predictions. It is predicted that 50% of, of the time, or in other words, a 1 in 2 chance, that they would have a capital G, lowercase g. And if these were the phenotypes, the same type, there'd be a 50% chance of being gray and 50% chance of being white. This last example, I'm just going to walk through it and not say anything. You can just kind of try to quiz yourself as we go.